Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on Cinema 4D deformers. In this video I will demonstrate the basic functions of the deformers from the easy to use tools like the bend and twist to the more complex tools like the displacer and mesh deformer. This is Pete Merrick with Triplet3D. Alright, let's jump right into Cinema 4D and you can find your deformers right up here in the main menu. Uh, I just ripped it off of the main menu by clicking this little tab right here. So I just docked it over here. Alright, so let's just start really quick with uh, creating a cube and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to resize this cube 24 inches by 24 by 78 height alright so we're just going to start with the bend deformer so the way that these deformers work you need to make the deformer a child of the geometry that you want deformed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bend deformer and I'm going to drag it so we see that arrow right above the cube and then let go, and now this bend deformer is a child of this cube. All right, so we can go into the bend deformer. I could change the size of this by grabbing my scale tool, or I could change the size of the bend deformer right here where it says size. All right, so literally what we have to do is go into the strength, and I'll increase the strength, and it's going to start bending my cube. But as you can tell, it's uh, it's not bending it very much because my cube doesn't have any segments. So I'll go up here, grab shading with lines, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding seg segments in the Y direction. All right. So once I start adding segments, that that bend starts getting a little bit more um, uh, starts getting a little bit more curve to it. Okay. So we have our strength right here, and we have an angle that we could play around with. So that's the basics of the bend deformer. So you make it a child of your geometry and you play with the strength. All right, let's delete that one. And then I'll show you the shear deformer. The shear, same thing. You make it a child of your geometry and you have a strength right here. You have angle. See the shear deformer, <clears throat> if we change the segments of our cube, it's gonna shear it just like the bend did. If I increase my segments of the Y to this curvature, it's going to follow the curve of our shear. So if we go down here and I change this curvature to zero, that'll give me the same thing that I did a few minutes ago. Let's try a twist. So twist will make that a child. And we'll just increase the angle of our twist. And that's pretty much as simple as that one is. The melt deformer. This melt deformer is going to start melting your geometry right from the center of the world. So if I take this up, see it changes the, the geometry. And I'm going to start, I'm going to use the melt deformer with a different type of geometry. So here's our sphere. So literally all we have to do with the melt deformer is increase the strength or decrease the strength. So now when I move this down, you can see a little bit more clearly. See, it's going to start melting right from this point right here. So that's the melt deformer right there. Explosion effects. So we're going to explode our object. And it's also going to add thickness to our object. So the explosion, we control that with the time right here. We control that. We can also go in and play with these nodes right here and also control the explosion. There's also gravity, variation, acceleration. Uh, the spherify, actually let's start with an oil tank. So the spherify literally wants to take our geometry and make it into a sphere, right? So if I have my strength on my spherify at zero, I can increase that strength all the way to 100 till that becomes a sphere. And this works on pretty much any kind of geometry. So I'll drop a cylinder into here, and I'll take the spherify, and make it a child of the cylinder. Obviously this uh, cylinder is not working because we don't have enough segments in the height. So if I go back in here, and I increase our segments, height segments. So that's an important consideration when you're working with modifiers, are the number of segments in your parametric primitive. All right. So if something's not working exactly the way that you want it to, it's probably because you don't have enough segments in your height or your width. So just keep that in mind. The next one that I want to show you is the wrap deformer. So just take a basic cube and I'll just
just resize it a little bit. Take the wrap and make that a child of the cube. So again, this cube is trying to wrap around this wrap deformer, but as you can see, it's just uh, it's we're not getting any curves to it. So I'll go back into my cube and I'll start increasing the number of segments in the x axis. All right. So here's the curve. We could play with the height, the width. So when we change the width, it also changes our geometry. Here's the longitude start, where you want it to start from and where you want it to end. Okay, movement, you can move that up like that, and that's gonna, that, that comes in pretty useful if you're creating like a staircase or something, like a spiral staircase. Tension, camera, I'll quickly run through this one as well, and I'll do it on a, on a sphere. So here's the way that this one works. When you go into your camera deformer, you can control the amount of grid segments right here. So I'll just make this 20 by 20. And then when you're in your camera deformer, what you need to do is go into your point mode. And then you can select these points. And you can start moving these around. And that displaces your geometry by sort of looking through this virtual camera. So anytime that I start to rotate around my my viewport with this camera deformer on, it's going to deform my geometry. All right. So let's say, for instance, we create another cube, and I'm looking through my camera deformer again. It's not going to affect that cube. It's only going to affect the sphere because I added the camera deformer to my sphere only. All right. That's the basics of that. Wind. Let's just create a capsule. Make the wind a child of that. And now when I hit play, it starts sort of acting like wind. So let's see what, what we have going on here. Turbulence. Let's increase this turbulence. If we increase the frequency, I think that's going to make it go a little bit faster. So now when we hit play, this wind is going a little bit faster. Let's try the bulge deformer. Again, we'll make it a child of the capsule. And we'll just play with the strength. So we could bring it in as well if we have a negative number. Make it bulge out or bring it in. Here's our taper. Strength. We can increase the strength. Curvature we could bring down to zero if we wanted or bump it up. Squash and stretch. This comes in really handy if you're animating like a bouncing ball or something. Let's just take a sphere and make that a child of the, the sphere. And we'll take this factor and we can increase it and decrease it to make it squash and stretch. So that's how that one works. Pretty straightforward. Explosion. If we make it a child of the sphere and we just increase the strength. There we go. We just exploded our sphere. And increase the speed. There we go. There's our explosion. And size. We could play with that if we wanted one of these pieces to get a little bit bigger randomness and then you can animate your sphere exploding shatter deformer here's what this one does it's going to shatter everything right from the bottom of our deformer so if i take our deformer i can actually move this down to the bottom of the sphere and now it's going to shatter from the bottom of the sphere formula this one's pretty cool it's going to make it look like a sort of liquidy mesh. You can always go back in here and change the effect. So if I change it to X radial, it's going to affect our sphere differently. Z radial, again, affects it differently. Let's try this polygon reduction deformer. This is a really popular look that's happening right now, is really low poly scenes and imagery. The way that you control this is literally the reduction strength. So right now I'm at zero. If I start increasing this, it's just going to start taking away polygons from, from my geometry. The next thing that I want to show you is a correction deformer. Typically, if you want to deform an object's points, lines, or polygons, what you have to do is 
you first have to go into, into here and make it editable. And now you'll have access to your points, your lines. and your polygons okay but this next deformer allows you to actually start manipulating your points lines and polygons without making it ed editable so let's just increase these segments and I'll add a correction deformer I'll make that a child so now with my correction deformer I can go in and I could change the look of my cube over here but what the nice thing about this is I still have access to all these parametri uh, these parameters over here in the attributes manager. So I can still go in and make the size of this cube uh, or change the size, the size of this cube without using the scale function. It still allows me to have access to those parameters. That's the correction deformer. The other nice thing about this correction deformer is you can actually animate the uh, amount of manipulation that you did on your geometry. So if you just use the strength function right here, you can animate this this thing uh, growing into this new shape. Displacer, this is another really good one. So displacement, where is my displacer? Here it is. The way that this one works, typically if you want to add displacement to your geometry, you would add displacement in your materials, and then you would have to take a render to see the actual effect of your displacement. But what this displacer does is it actually allows you to add displacement to your geometry within the viewport so you can see exactly what it's going to look like. So if we go into shading, custom shader, channel selected, and let's just go down here and select, um, let's say fire. The reason is that it's not working because I don't have enough uh, geometry. Okay. So to see the displacement, you have to have enough geometry. So let's just increase the segments on our cube we could take a displacer maybe bring it up a little bit and now you can modify your your geometry being displaced by this um, displacement deformer so if we go back in here you can go into shading let's just try a different shader type let's go surfaces marble see what that looks like it's going to deform it pretty significantly You could just play around with this. You could find all kinds of interesting ways to deform your object. There's a fire again. And before we wrap these, this thing up, I want to show you a few other ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a cube. And what I'm going to show you right now is the... Which one do I want to show you? It is the mesh deformer. All right. So I'm going to make that a child of the cube. Before I do that, let's first modify this cube. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna model out like a basic human shape. So here's the head. And let's just make some arms. So now I have a cube that sort of looks like a, like a human figure, right? So I'm gonna take this mesh and I'm gonna put it inside the cube. All right, so the way that this mesh works is it actually needs a cage. We need to create another type of geometry, another piece of geometry that we're going to use for this cage. So I'm going to take this cube, Command C, Command V. I'm going to delete the second mesh, and I'll use the second cube as my cage. That's going to deform my original. So I'm going to just increase this a little bit. I'll go to my front view, and I'll just start tweaking the size of this um, of this cage. Okay, awesome. So that's our cage. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take I'm going to click my mesh and right where it says cages, I'm going to click my cube and drop it into there. Geometry inside the cage, what we have to do is initialize. Okay? And then we can go to our cage, right click, character tags, and then pose morph. Okay? We want to enable points in our pose morph. And now with our points selected, let's just select these points on the outside. We'll push these up. Just grab these points on the head. And we'll push this up as well. And now what we'll do in the uh, pose morph tag is we'll add a pose. Okay. So that's going to give us two poses, our base pose. And then our, we'll just rename this arms up. 
Okay, we can hide our cage. Now with a pose morph selected, what we have to do is we have to go animate. All right, and that's gonna give us a bunch of sliders. I'll let, let you see a little bit better over here. And these sliders will allow us to animate this, uh, this mesh. So we can now animate this figure with you know his arms and arms and head going up, and that's using the pose morph tag and in conjunction with the mesh. This is Pete Merrick with Triplet 3D. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for watching.